It's fair to say that not all great movies are immediately compelling from their first scene, and in fact, it's quite a rarity that a film truly manages to lock the viewer's gaze from its opening moments. But these films, well, they grabbed us right out of the gate. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies that demand your attention immediately. Number 10. Mad Max Fury Road as the first Mad Max movie in a full 30 years, Fury Road absolutely needed to come storming out of the gate with something special, and that it certainly did. The first moment in George Miller's high-octane post-apocalyptic epic, after a brief opening narration that is, is an eye-watering glimpse of the beautiful yet arid desert wasteland, while Max and his trusty Inceptor overlook the horizon. Within mere moments, Max has killed and eaten a mutated two-headed lizard, hopped into his car and driven off into the expanse, as he's chased down by a gang of war boys. Such begins what is effectively a two-hour chase movie that sees Max teaming up with Furiosa to help take down the vile tyrant known as Immortan Joe. The opening moments do a fantastic job of setting the mood and style while also confirming that this isn't going to be your typical action flick. If you're not totally gripped by that mesmerizing open shot of the desert landscape, are you even awake at this point? Number 9. Train Spotting an easy way to capture the audience's attention from the get-go is to use a popular song. And while this can feel an often cheap and lazy way when it's employed as a crutch to elevate mediocre material, in the case of Danny Boyle's train spotting, that couldn't be further from the truth. Boyle's masterful 1996 black comedy slams into gear with the opening drum beat of Iggy Pop's Lust for Life, which serves as the soundtrack to the iconic Choose Life montage, where Renton and Spud pound the pavement while fleeing their pursuers down Edinburgh's Prince's Street. It's an image that is forever seared into the brain of anyone who's seen this film, but is literally just the beginning of a relentlessly energetic, darkly humorous drama that sustains its momentum all the way to the finish. Number 8. Scream as opening scenes in horror movies go, it's extremely tough to top this delirious expectation-defying prologue to Wes Craven's Scream. While much has been said about Craven's canny decision to cast Drew Barrymore as the film's first victim, Casey, who dies at roughly the 10-minute mark, this gripping, pulse-quickening opening is so much more than just a mere feat of shock value. Right from the very first moment, when the phone rings and Casey picks it up, we're intrigued by the mysterious, unfamiliar, and some might say sexy voice on the other end. Opening a horror movie with a series of phone calls isn't exactly the norm, immediately throwing off audiences who expected a more typical generic slasher film introduction. Furthermore, our caller talks horror movies with Casey, revealing the film's self-aware bent early, before things take sinister turns when the caller reveals that he's close by. The rest of the sequence is both gut-wrenchingly tense and a shocking departure from the expected, but it all begins with the compelling simplicity of a strange voice on the other end of a phone. Number 7. Apocalypse Now now, spoiler alert, this won't be the only time that Francis Ford Coppola appears on this list, and with damn good reason. Apocalypse Now is perhaps the war movie to end all war movies, an almost inexplicably atmospheric visualization of the off-spoken mantra, war is hell, and it uses every tool at the filmmaker's disposal to depict the spiritual destruction caused by the Vietnam War. And it all begins with that unforgettable opening. The very first shot is seemingly still, calm, an image of the forest of palm trees, and is accompanied by the synthesized sound of a helicopter as one flies by, which is followed by the initially subdued tones of the doors, the end. As we keep watching, dust begins to fill the screen, more helicopters fly in the camera's path, and the forest is promptly set ablaze by a gigantic, strangely beautiful blaze. All the while, the lyrics, this is the end, hauntingly ring out. As we survey the carnage, we fade to a shot of Captain Willard's face staring up at his hotel room's spinning rotor fan. It is, without a hint of hyperbole, utterly hypnotic confirming just how consumed his life is with war and is juxtaposed against the destructive might of the US Army. Number 6. Gone Girl David Fincher sure knows how to open a movie, and while it's certainly not his best film overall, Gone Girl might have the strongest and most distinctive attention grabbing opening of any Fincher joint. This film opens on a seemingly benign shot of the back of Amy's head, which has quickly lent context from narration by her husband Nick, who pictures cracking her lovely skull, unspooling her brains, just trying to get answers. In another movie, such a declaration might not seem quite so sinister or literal-minded, but in a film about Amy's disappearance and Nick's 
possible complicity, it immediately gets audiences edgy and nervous. As Nick strokes Amy's head, she turns to him and stares a hole right the way through him. The precise meaning ambiguous, but generating an undeniably discomforting mood from the outset. Nothing is more immediately compelling to viewers than the human face. On a basic primeval level, we are hardwired to scan a person's face for meaning, and so the second that Amy turns around, Finch has got us right in the palm of his hand. Number 5. The Dark Knight Christopher Nolan clearly puts a lot of effort into crafting memorable prologue sequences for most of his movies, though never gets any better than in The Dark Knight. Nobody who's ever seen this film will surely forget the Joker's daring, iconic opening bank heist, and right from its very first shot, the film touts a just got real vibe. The first shot is a beautiful, sweeping image of the Gotham City skyline as the camera then fast pulls in towards a building. Soon enough, a window is violently shattered and a perp wearing a clown mask fires a zip line out of it. Then we cut to another man, unbeknownst to us at the time, to be the Joker, waiting on a street corner to be picked up. Such begins a riveting bank heist which offers a thrilling introduction to Nolan's Joker, presented here in a manner that is far more grounded than basically all other Batman media combined. If you were ever lucky enough to watch the Dark Knight in IMAX, you'll probably vividly remember how startling that opening full-frame image of the Gotham skyline truly is. Nolan wanted everyone to know that he wouldn't be resting on his laurels with his Batman sequel, immediately laying his ambition bare and telling the viewers, this ain't your daddy's joker. Number 4. The Godfather as much as a three-hour, primarily character-driven 1970s crime drama won't be to everyone's taste, The Godfather commands viewers to pay close attention from minute one. Even if the Paramount logo wasn't accompanied by the iconic, haunting musical score, the film grips immediately with the loaded opening declaration, I believe in America. Then begins a lengthy, unbroken shot where we meet with Don Corleone, on the day of his daughter's wedding to request vengeance for his own daughter's assault. Between the horrifying story and the gradual manner in which the Don is revealed to the audiences, it's masterful filmmaking that foregoes flashy tricks in favor of the simplicity of A, not cutting, B, zooming out slowly, and C, cloaking one of our main characters in shadow. The scene speedily confirms Corleone's hallowed presence and also that the film will be intimately concerned with the notion of the American dream throughout. Number 3. Terminator 2 Judgment Day has a sequel more aggressively one-upped itself more immediately than Terminator 2 Judgment Day? James Cameron wrung a tremendous amount of production value out of the original Terminator's modest $6.4 million budget, but with roughly $100 million to play with this time around, T2 is simply on a whole other level from its very first scene. It opens with a brief, eerie montage of modern-day Los Angeles, people driving to work, kids playing, representing the many great lives at risk by Skynet, before we then flash forward to the future war of 2029. Here, the cars and playgrounds are now ashen remnants of Skynet's apocalypse, as Sarah Connor's narration details the billions of lives that were lost in the fires of Judgment Day, and in moments, a human skull is crushed by the foot of a Terminator endoskeleton, as all-out war breaks out between the human resistance and the machines. It's an exquisite example of blockbuster filmmaking craft, melding practical effects with cutting-edge VFX to produce a result that is still dropping 30 years later. Number 2. A Clockwork Orange there wasn't ever the possibility of a Stanley Kubrick film not landing on this list, and though the filmmaker has arguably made better films, perhaps none immediately grabs the audience as intensely as A Clockwork Orange. We return here to the notion that there's rarely anything as innately compelling as a person's face, and Kubrick expertly exploits his leading man Malcolm McDowell, who as troubled protagonist Alex stares a hole through the audience in the film's lengthy opening shot, all the while drinking his glass of air quotes milk alongside his droogs. As Kubrick pulls back through the milk bar, knowingly adorned with posed female mannequins, and Alex's narration begins, McDowell never averts his gaze from the viewer, as proves profoundly, appropriately unsettling. And that's not to ignore the disquieting impact of the uneasy musical score. Right from that opening shot, Kubrick has us locked in his vice grip, and he doesn't let up until the much-needed respite of the closing credits. And number one, Enter the Void. Gaspar Noé is nothing if not a provocative filmmaker, and though he surely reached his peak infamy with his 2002 thriller Irreversible, he once again turned many heads with the release of his experimental 2009 drama Enter the Void. But arguably, the most startling thing to appear in the entire movie, and rest assured there is a ton of nightmare fuel imagery to witness, occurs before it's even really started. Enter the Void's opening titles are surely the most willfully jarring ever made, a firm flipping of the bird by the director at other filmmakers who dare to make their titles 
feels so boring and conventional. Instead, he delivers highly stylized, intentionally off-putting titles that open with strobed credits flashing fast in front of the viewer, complete with an unpleasant droning sound. Eventually, we switch to a second set of credits where an increasingly hallucinogenic series of near-unreadable credits are flashed across the screen, accompanied by a discordant musical track. It is insane and, quite frankly, amazing. The only way you can't be perked up and paying close attention to the movie at this point is if you're quite literally dead. Apparently, the unfinished version of the film screened at festivals and didn't have any opening credits, and so due to many complaining about its demanding length, the director decided the credits should be as fast as possible and as graphic as possible, which they absolutely are. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 movies that demand your attention immediately. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my Warhammer battle reports and streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I want to demand your attention immediately, and just make sure that you are being kind to yourself, both mentally and physically, my friend, because you deserve all the best things in life, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You are a massive ledge. Now go out there and utterly smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.